Scott Boris is his agent, and he joins us now. Where do we stand with this uh, situation, Scott? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the interesting story here, and um, trying to trying to uh, see both sides of this and understand the rule. But uh, where where do we stand with uh, Chris Bryant's uh, situation playing for the Cubs this season? Well, I'm not sure that anybody's made a decision yet. I've certainly gotten a lot of calls on the subject because Chris's performance has been um, well. It's been extraordinary. It was in college, he hit you know far more home runs than any other player. Um, and then, um, you know, he was the first position player taken in his draft, and and then he went out in the minor leagues, and of course, and hit 43 home runs last year. Uh, in addition to having batting averages that you know illustrate his ability not only to hit for power but to be a quality hitter, and then he goes into spring training here, and it's pretty rare, Dan, that you have someone with a 2,000 OPS. You know, <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's quite a performance, and um, I think the the aspect that um, and really a tenet of Major League Baseball is that it's it's very hard to deny that someone who's performing at these levels, well above star Major League player levels for you know a period of time, is that the opportunity to perform at the Major League level um, is something that he's earned. And certainly earned that right to uh, to uh, illustrate that, and that what I think is what Major League Baseball is about is that the primary goal of everyone is that the integrity of the game be kept, and that the best players play in the big leagues. But does he have a position? Of course he does. He's a you know he's a certainly a league average third baseman, um, and is very athletic. Can certainly play the outfield if he. If they so choose, but to uh, um, to suggest that you know Chris Bryant played third base and, and has played third base all the way through his uh, you know professional career, and, and, mm-hmm. and I have heard from no one inside the industry or uh, outside the Cubs organization uh, that suggests that he's not going to be a quality uh, major league third baseman. But it's this: if he's not on the opening day roster, it's because of what? Well, I would probably say the opiate of player control. Explain. And that is where the uh, um, they would uh, often teams manipulate the uh, allowed rules and um, keep them down in the minor leagues for a small period of time, and then call them back up, and it gives them another year of control uh, of his free agency. Uh, so they would have seven seasons of control as opposed to six. Okay, but nobody can force a team to play a player or promote a player, right? I don't think anyone, I mean, Joe Madden should write his lineup card every day as he so fit, you know, sees fit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, uh, I don't think anybody is suggesting that uh, anyone, you know, from the outside, that should be a managerial decision an organizational decision on a daily basis as to who to play. However, it gets rather ridiculous is that who, who would you not play? Why would you not play a player? that is so dominant in his performance uh, for your team. And you would, uh, it, for performance reasons, it's obvious that there are players who are of lesser minor league or triple-A experience. Uh, there are players with lesser performance who are actually going to make the Cubs team that were Chris's teammates. And so you, you have to look at this from a number of, um, I think, windows, Dan, to say that, if it's a performance issue, fine, then the club should make it. But is it a performance issue? And with this kind of performance, uh, many writers and everyone have attached to this and said, this player has obviously illustrated that he is deserving of a major league um, you know, op- opportunity, mainly because he's, there's just not much more he can do in the minor leagues. And at the major league level uh, uh, in spring training, obviously, he's performing at levels that exceed star major league players. But do you understand the business side of this? If you were on the other side and you were running the Cubs, would you do the same thing and keep him down to, uh, you know, not let him have that, that, you know, jump ahead with his free agency year? Well, I think the issue here is that this is not a baseball performance decision. This is a decision that's based upon um, baseball control. 
and the jobs of what general managers do and club presidents do to determine um, what they want to do long term is one issue. But I don't think that the integrity of the game requires that we have our best players in baseball. But you can also say that this is a long-term baseball decision. It can well, actually... I, I, can, I can certainly say that when other owners have managed this process differently is that I believe for fans who are paying, you know, the Cubs have one of the highest season ticket prices of anyone in baseball. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go out and pay tickets for 2015 knowing the best players are not on the field, knowing that that's something that's going to help my organization seven years from now. I think that the the integrity of the game requires that we do not let advantages to individual clubs get in the way of the overall scope of what Major League Baseball stands for. And it's that principle, the best players play in the big leagues. And when there is a known and obvious player that is clearly a Major League talent and a talent who is you know, a rare power hitter, and when fans go to watch the Cubs play or fans who are Cubs fans themselves, is that they're going to know the Chicago Cubs team is not whole because one of their best talents is not on the team for reasons of business practices. I don't think that's good for Major League Baseball. I think many other owners, like in Tulowitzki's case or Hayward's case, yeah. ownership said, we're going to put our best team on the field now and try to win this year, and that is our annual obligation. And I assure you, Dan, that the drafters of the collective bargaining agreement, when they put these rules in place, there is, I don't think anyone in that room said to one another, this gives the unilateral right to teams to go out and do something for an individual club that is injurious to the best interests of players and Major League Baseball by not having the best talent in the league. He's Scott Boris, sports agent, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. How much do you want to know about your clients off the field? You know, you do uh, you do your best to um, uh, certainly know what it is that's going to make that player the best optimal. And by being optimal in every aspect of his life, um, and it's a difficult process because it's one where each player is an individual. Um, each player is. Uh, you know, has his own methods of approach and comfort. And you certainly don't want to um, do anything to, uh, uh, other than aid the player and be there as counsel and as help and let him live his, his normal life. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we, uh, the relationship is, is one where we're able to uh, understand the player from, uh, from uh, most aspects of his life. But did you care that A-Rod was using steroids when you represented him? I had no knowledge. I've never had any knowledge of any player. And I don't want to speak about anyone specifically, but I have never, never known um, that any one of the, anyone I represented had uh, any involvement, anything like that. As a matter of fact, um, I have, we developed sport fitness institutes and we have our own training staff. We have our own medical staff. And we give players literature. We you, educate them. Do you have testing? And we have, no, we don't obviously uh, do, do testing for our players outside what Major League Baseball does. But we, we certainly take precautions because uh, as an entity, we want to be in this game a long, long time. And we respect it. Uh, we believe, and we've always said, going back into the uh, late 90s, we brought materials to players talking about how injurious uh, any performance-enhancing dynamics were to players because it created bulk. It was uh, joints, ligaments, tendons, all in baseball. When you, when you add that bulk, uh, you're not going to sustain your career. So there are very logical reasons for all this. And... The reality of it is there's many forces that impact a player. There's many things that go on outside. And to say that we know everything, obviously we don't. 
and uh, it's disappointing. Um, and we certainly take every step. And I know, um, you know, our company has taken steps beyond what anyone else in sport has because we have psychologists, we've got sport fitness institutes, we have our own trainers. We're constantly in contact with every team to make sure that um, the ills of the past do not, you know, happen in the future. Final 30 seconds, Scott. If the Cubs don't have Chris Bryant on the opening day roster, what? I think Major League Baseball is injured. I think the every fan will look at the Cubs differently and every opponent will look at them differently. And that's not what we want. We want to know that when we go to a ballpark, that the greatest players in the world are on that field. And that brand is something that I think uh, owners, unions, and everybody involved has to protect. Scott, thanks. Good luck. Dan, always a pleasure. Scott Boris.